Well, hey everyone, um, coming to you from the UK in my little studio setup here. And today's video is going to be sort of a ramble philosophical discussion uh, of Shinzo Maeda, a Japanese landscape photographer. He's probably my favorite photographer, and I happen to have these two books. So I thought that they would be a good kicking off point, sort of point of departure to uh, talk about landscape photography and um, some of the ideas that Maeda brings up in his work. I wrote an article for On Landscape magazine about six months ago, and ever since then I've been wanting to do a bit more of an in-depth video. So yeah, this is that. Um, I hope you enjoy. And yeah, let's have a look. I'm gonna start with um, this here, Kamakochi. Zoom in a little bit. So I thought I'd do sort of a flick through of two of the books that I own. Uh, some of the images talk about the editing and uh, Maeda's artistic vision and how he uses his uh, sort of intentional practice. Most are, uh, as far as I'm aware, all of the images that he made in these books uh, on a tripod and with medium and large format film. So very sort of intentional practice. I just love the uh, the change in paper type that you get even just in the first three pages here. This dark and light. And this page is almost a sort of thin sugar paper. Yeah, really, really beautiful. And the, I mean, the printing in both of these books is uh, stunning, to be honest. And now with Kamakochi, he, he brought in a separate essayist and uh, poet. Here's Kushida, and he wrote the foreword for uh, this book. And it's, it's really beautifully written. And I love the pairing uh, of some sort of almost poetry written here against the images. So the, the pairing of the poetry with the images is directly pointing us to this sort of concept that Shinzo Maeda's images are a sort of visual poetry of the Japanese landscape. And as with poetry, there are meters and rhymes and rhythms. And for Maeda, the rhythm of his visual poetry is the change in seasons. So we've got from spring to summer is where he starts us off. But he does a sort of clever thing where he actually starts slightly before spring. It's the first, first breaths of spring, as we see here. So we see spring emerge as we move through. And I mean, the pairings are, are really beautiful here. Um, switching between the two formats, uh, four by five and square, uh, made with a Hasselblad and made with um, four by five large format view cameras. And, you know, we see his sensitivity to time, I think is another important point to bring up. Um, as we get into so the more green landscapes, we even see this time in a purposely blurred out image of some foliage. And this sort of gentle passing of time as well. It's not about um, the instance of the photograph, it's about time as it moves through the seasons. So his images, I mean, you can feel this emotional connection to the place. And he really delves into these fine detail photographs. Um, 
as you can see, I mean, he pairs this beautiful panorama with a small detail picked out of the landscape. And in the, in the afterward of Kamakochi, he actually says, I always try to be conscious of the fact that any great landscape is an assemblage of smaller, many smaller features of nature. It is my belief that we can be more, it is my belief that we can more fully appreciate nature's grandest scenery if we first take in the smaller scale loveliness at our feet. This is probably my, one of my favorite images from the book, the flickering dancing light. Um, and I mean, his appreciation for light, especially when you see in this image, is just astounding. And it gives us a sense that he's drawing a, a personal connection to this landscape, you know. It's photographs from all different times of day, different lighting conditions, different seasons. This pairing is probably my, my uh, favorite pairing. It says between showers and dewdrops. And it's that sense of between the two images of passing time that rain has fallen, and this is then what the ground looks like. Maeda is also quite clever in sometimes pointing his camera directly across the landscape and then pointing it down at his feet. So yeah, I think it's it comes to be quite an introspective practice. Um, as we As we get into the second book, we'll see that Maeda himself grew up along one of a uh, one of the main rivers in Japan. So his love for water and how it moves through the landscape, how it forms the geology, uh, is a reflection of his own upbringing. Now uh, we sort of see a little his historical essay, and then we move into autumn to winter. Again, beautiful light and the pairing of poetry and images. Maeda says in the afterwards that he felt as though he didn't have enough time to make this book, and that at some point he had to feel as though it was finished. Um, it's all obviously from one particular range of mountains. We can now start to see the first bring, uh, beginnings of beautiful autumn color. But again, bringing in the smaller scenes and the water that is Invariable, invariably present in this particular valley. Maeda also does an interesting thing where the photographs aren't necessarily in chronological order. As we see, these look more like the end of autumn. But then we come to another page where we're back in full bloom. And then as we move on, winter is approaching as well. So again, it's this gentle passage of time and the sort of twisting back and forth editing really hones us into that sense of time. You know, Maeda has, uh, primed us, I swear the, the editor uh, has primed us to not necessarily expect a strict chronological, you know, there's surprises and um, unexpected weather that comes. It says late autumn silver sleet. Right, 
getting to the end of this one, this book. The varying in formats is also, I think, refreshing. It breaks up the monotony of this sort of constant barrage of just overwhelming beauty. Um, and not only the breaking up of format, but going between these smaller scenes and wider scenes, I think provides the variance that a project like this really needs. Um, I'll just, I can zoom in on this particular image. This image is probably one of my favorites as well in the book. It's flowing large needles moving through the scene. I mean, it's something you wouldn't spot unless you spent a lot of time in this one location. I think that's something that Maeda excels at. And we finally come into winter. Ice on the pond. Beautiful snow bordered brook. And finally, deep winter. Snowfalls, fog, dark, cloudy days, and the moon. So, yeah, I think Kamakochi, as I've said, pairs this poetry of images, uh, pairs poetry with images, sorry, I should say. And um, yeah, directly pointing to his imagery as a visual poetry of the Japanese landscape. Now, the second book I wanna show is This Land, This Beauty, Japan's Natural Splendor. And this time Maeda actually writes the introduction himself. So really sort of quite different to um, the first book in that he's it's a personal call to action. Um, he's reminding us that he's the photographer behind these images and telling us a particular narrative. So, I mean, most of the text is about conservation and our responsibility to preserve the natural landscape uh, in the face of sort of encroaching modernism and industry. And when I first opened this book, I was actually quite surprised to see black and white images. Everything I had seen of his was uh, color photographs. So to me, the black and white has the sense of nostalgia and it's paired with personal text about his upbringing in a mountain village, again, on, uh, on the brook or on the side of the Asakawa River, Kita Asakawa River. So from the get go, we are sort of tuned into Maeda's point of view, where he's coming from and what he's trying to say. Again, he collaborates with other artists, this time with calligraphy. And these, these four characters, Sansen, So, Moku, is mountains, rivers, grass, and trees. But in Japanese combined, they express the idea of nature. Uh, probably not a fair English translation, so it, it sort of holds more than just nature. It's the temporality of the seasons, the beauty of the landscape, etc. And again, we see Maeda working with these sort of very naturalistic small pieces of the landscape. Um, A different sense of pass the passing of time, but again, it's that same uh, approach to seasonality and a slow 
uh, a s slowness of the landscape and appreciating everything that's happening around you. I'll move ahead to uh, my personal favorite image in the book. Although there are some absolutely beautiful images. Here we go. Just uh, zoom that in. So this one's titled uh, Clear Stream Edged with Maples. And to me, this particular photograph perfectly captures that nostalgia that I was talking about and his emotion. Um, the diagonal flowing water, you know, entering into the frame rather than leaving it. The relationship of the rocks with the flow of water and the sort of turbulence that they create but it's paired with areas of stillness that lie behind the rocks. And then the edge of this spring maple creeping into frame makes you think that they sort of go on forever out of frame. Um, I think it's just this sort of perfect balance between all of these different elements, including the beautiful soft light that's coming through and you know, this passage of time is sort of a metaphor for life itself, really. Um, the erosion of the landscape, the river, water, spring growth as a renewal and a rebirth. Um, yeah, I mean, Maeda held the highest of value in the preservation of our landscape. And this understanding, I think, came out of a introspection and an inner peace that he achieved by spending so much time in these places. So he says, man can never escape that he too is an animal, a part of the environment. And Maeda's photography is a, uh, a reflection of this patience and a devotion to the natural landscape. I'll, uh, I'll flick through a little bit more just to give you a sense of this book. Again, we move through the seasons. Um, The editing in this book is also beautiful. The image pairs, the order. I enjoy that it's unbroken, whereas the other book is split up into definite or defined sections. This one feels more free flowing. Um, and I think my editor has included images that are uh, quite more, quite a bit more challenging in this in this book. The previous book was it's very uh, pretty, whereas this one is asking everyone to really appreciate every part of nature in equal regard. So I mean, if we just look. Some of the mountain scenery, you know, this beautiful waterfall in a hidden ravine should be held in equal regard to a footpath through your local woods. He's also got a, just a, an outstanding eye for color. Um, I mean, for instance, warm and cool just works so well. Again, warm and cool. The image pairings really, really, uh, really beautiful. And this is just about the end of the book.
to probably one of my favourite spreads again. So hard to choose between <laughs> a lot of these. But I mean, for instance, this, you can tell how much time he took just to compose it based on, you know, the spacings that he's been able to achieve between each trunk. So methodical and precise. There we go. Well, um, yeah, not a, I'm not a hundred percent sure how to wrap this up. Um, other than to say, you know, I absolutely love Maeda's work and these two books are really, really stunning. Um, and I think they're thought provoking and there's a lot to learn from the editing, the images themselves, uh, etc. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this sort of format. And yeah, feel free to discuss some of the ideas presented here. And let me know if I should do some more, uh, some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching. Cheers.